Thank you, Mr. Reichard. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for uh, your testimony today. Um, my home state of, of Washington has been the beneficiary of biodiesel plant investments uh, that employ hundreds of Washingtonians. Mr. Meyer, what is the impact of the expiration of the biodiesel tax credit on the market? It absolutely has created uncertainty. In addition to that, we have had the marketplace speculating whether it would be reinstated or not. And that's actually created some real difficulty in product distribution throughout the United States because you'll have some of our customers become long product or short or what have you. And so the expiration, and again, like you've all described here today, uh, just unknowingly it's here, it's not here. And it makes it difficult to make those investments both for our customer and our company that represent the biodiesel group. So the cause of speculation and uncertainty and led to product, some problems in product dis distribution. Can you describe what, you're, what you mean by well, that? Basically, like if you have an expiring program, the potential for building up supplies at the end of the calendar year where it expires, so the first quarter of the next year, maybe four months, the industry doesn't run. So it's up and down. Um, we, we truly haven't had the opportunity to see this work since you made some good decisions here in Washington on stopping the dumping from South America into our marketplace. So we truly haven't even seen the, the full RFS RENs and the tax credit work like it could, but they're definitely provided some good jobs. This is good legislation good that you passed. Okay. Appreciate it, thank you. A key to the success of Washington State's economy is the movement of goods. By connecting customers to the National Freight Railroad Network Short Line uh, Railroad, play an integral role in getting goods to the market. For several Congresses, I've played uh, a role in this and proud to be a co-sponsor of a bill uh, to make 45G permanent, uh, along with Representative Jenkins. And uh, she's been a leader on this also. So, so Ms. Uh, Petrie, can you uh, discuss the role of 45G in the new tax code? Yes, sir, I can. As I, may, as I remarked uh, earlier, 45G is vital in order for us to sustain our railroads and to continue to grow our railroads. We've got to get to the point where we we're handling 286,000 pound cars. Most short lines can only handle 268,000. So what we've done in the past is we have taken the money, our own money, and invested it into the track. And with the help of 45G, we're able to take that additional funds, those additional tax credit dollars, and turn that back into the track. So we continue to reinvest our own money. Traditionally, the work that we have done has been maintenance, and so it's, it's expensed completely. So the tax reform is, is excellent, but it doesn't move the dial in the needs that the short lines have uh, because we're already expensing the maintenance. Where we need help is to help us rebuild, and we're not asking for a handout Instead, we're asking you for a hand up. Help us to continue to be able to continue to spend our money, our funds, at a greater level than what we would traditionally spend, and then to turn around and reinvest that money, the tax credit money, right back into the track. You're making a big difference every time that you enact 45G. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 